The restless Kaiser and Johnny B from Modeling for Advantage kindly sent me this Hornice Hummel sprue to review. We'd given up ever seeing it arrive because it was missing in transit for six or seven weeks. I guess Royal Snail and Australia Pest just passed it hand to hand, using any vagrant who was heading in vaguely the right direction. Quality work, fellas. Turns out they used clumsy, violent vagrants. Here's how the hull arrived. The package had taken some heavy hits. Can I fix it? Can I still review a kit that's in this condition? Stick with me to find out. This is GBX-182, the Hornice Tank Hunter platoon for Flames of War. Hornice is a tank hunter mounting an 8.8cm gun. You'll find four of these inside the platoon box set. But you can also build this kit as the Hummel SP artillery piece with the 15cm howitzer. The German Bulge Heavy Tank Hunter Kampfgruppe box set also contains five of these sprues. Two intended to be built as Hornice and three artillery support Hummels. Let's look at some history. Blitzkrieg was all about movement, and the German Waffenamt recognised the need for artillery and anti-tank guns to keep up with the pace of armoured advance. This meant self-propelled guns. Hummel and the Hornis or Nashorn are a German family of self-propelled artillery vehicles that share a common chassis. Both use the Alket-designed Geschutzwagen 3-4 chassis, which combined the Panzer III steering system and drivetrain with the Panzer IV hull and suspension. The weight of the guns and need for space for the fighting compartment necessitated moving the engine forward to the centre of the hull. SDKFZ-165 Hummel or Bumblebee mounted a 15cm heavy howitzer in an open fighting compartment at the rear of the vehicle. The armour of the compartment was thick enough to be proof against small arms and shell splinters. The crew of six men was a driver, radio operator, commander, gunner and two loaders. Early vehicles had a single raised hatch and compartment for the driver, but later vehicles switched to a wider two-hatch compartment which housed the radio operator as well. Heavy SP artillery batteries fielded six Hummels, plus two unarmed chassis used for ammunition transport. These heavy batteries added a bigger punch to supplement a division's more numerous 10.5cm armed WESP SP batteries. Gun traverse was limited to 15 degrees left or right, so the whole vehicle had to be turned to engage targets outside that arc. This could tear up soft ground, making it boggy, or causing breakdowns due to the continual strain on the Panzer III drivetrain components. The 15cm gun fired two-part separate loading ammunition, with the shell weighing 43 kilograms. Unfortunately, Hummel only carried 18 rounds of main gun ammunition, so needed regular resupply. The crew were issued an MG-34 or MG-42 for self-defence. Hummel entered service in 1943, with its first big-scale combat at the Battle of Kursk. By 1945, over 700 Hummels and an additional 175 ammunition carriers had been produced. Hornice, Hornet, or Nashorn, Rhinoceros, are both names for SDKFZ-164 the SP anti-tank version of the family. Hornice mounted a huge 8.8cm Pac-43 long-barrelled anti-tank gun instead of the Hummel's howitzer. The chassis was the same mid-engined Alket design using Panzer III and IV components. Hornice equipped six heavy anti-tank battalions, with each battalion fielding up to 45 vehicles. Again, the gun was mounted in an open-topped armoured fighting compartment at the rear of the vehicle. Crew was five men, driver, radio operator, commander, gunner and loader. Hornice never received the wider front hull crew compartment found on later model Hummels, just the raised hatch over the driver. The thin armour meant the Hornice's role was long-range anti-tank fire support, engaging Allied armour well out of range of any return fire. The tungsten carbide Panzergranate 40-43 round could penetrate 190mm of armour at 1,000 metres. 
The combination of a hard-hitting round with an excellent gun sight, good optics and an accurate gun made the vehicle very effective. Hornice also made its major combat debut at Kursk, where the long-range engagements of the Russian steppes largely minimised the disadvantages of thin armour and an open top. The closer terrain and shorter engagement ranges in Italy proved less favourable, but Hornice was still more mobile than towed-heavy pack guns. Both Hummel and Hornice were relatively successful, despite ongoing issues with suspension breakdown and engine overheating that were never fully solved. If we look at the back of the box, there's images of a completed Hornice and Hummel, as well as an exploded assembly diagram. The options for the Hornice parts are outlined in red, and the Hummel parts in blue. The box says it contains four vehicles, as well as a decal sheet. Not mentioned but included are some gun crew figures. Let's look at the plastic. All the parts come on a single sprue of dark yellow plastic. The detail is nice and strong, as you would expect from Battlefront plastic. The upper and lower hull parts are common for both vehicles. The upper hull piece has a circular hatch and a square locating post for positioning the separate driver's hatch. The two poles on the front of the hull are gun travel locks. The lower hull piece is the heavily damaged part in my kit, but you can see it has integral moulded fenders. There's good checker plate patterning as well as headlights, a standard German jack and a wooden jacking block. I managed to get this kit back together. Hopefully it will be good enough for me to still build the kit. The other parts in this section are a length of spare track and an AA mount MG42 machine gun. The tracks are one piece parts, keyed so they'll only fit on one way. The suspension are the four pairs of small road wheels you'd expect to see on a Panzer IV, but the drive sprocket and idler wheel are from the Panzer III. Tracks are pretty simple, with just simple bars around the whole track run. Simple but plenty good enough for a wargaming kit. There is some spoke detail on the road wheels. The two flat plates here are the armoured sides of the open top fighting compartment. The armour is thick enough to protect the crew from small arms and shell splinters but provides no overhead cover. There's some slight bolt detail here as well as the air intake grills for the mid-mounted engine. This is the 15cm heavy howitzer for the Hummel. The 15cm gun was already the Wehrmacht's division level heavy howitzer, so the gun was the logical choice to modify for mounting onto the Hummel. It simplified logistics. The other parts are the common right hand gun trunnion piece, the later extended drivers and radio operators hatches, and an ammunition stowage rack. Hummel only carried 18 rounds for the main gun aboard. This large front section for the fighting compartment is used for the Hornice. You can see mine is a bit dinged up from transit. There's some nice bolt detail here. There's a similar but slightly different mantlet for Hummel. Check the instructions to make sure you use the right one. There's two mantlet pieces here. The larger one is for the Hornice, while the smaller one is for the Hummel. It would be easy to get these wrong, so again, use the assembly diagram here to help out. The trunnion piece with the prominent elevation wheel is for the Hummel artillery piece, while the other one with the gunner's seat is for the Hornice's 8.8cm gun. The last piece is one of the Hornice anti-tank gun ammunition stowage racks. This fits on the inner wall of the fighting compartment sides. The long gun is the 8.8cm Pac-43 anti-tank gun. Like the towed version of this gun, it has a prominent muzzle brake. The last few parts are the rear piece for the fighting compartment, the Hornice's mantlet part and the earlier driver's hatch. The hull rear piece is the later version without the barrel shaped exhaust. The narrower early version of the driver's hatch here is correct for Hornice and early production Hummel. The SP anti-tank gun never used the later wide hatch section. You do get some gun crew figures. These are thermoplastic resin parts, and from the look of them they'll need a bit of clean up before assembly to get the best out of them. So those are the parts for the Hummel and Hornice plastic kit from Battlefront. Even from this damaged sprue, you can see the moulding quality, level of part detail and engineering are all pretty good. The level you'd expect from a modern Battlefront plastic kit. 
The only real issue I had during construction was a gap left on the casemate where the front and side pieces meet. I thought it might be due to the damage my review kit suffered, but others have mentioned it too. You might need a bit of filler here. It was also a squeeze to get the assembled gun and mantlet into the fighting compartment. It might be worth doing the gun first, then assemble the casemate around it. Or you could use swearing. That did the trick for me. While the parts count is relatively low, there are some similar looking optional parts between the Hummel and Hornice. You might need to keep an eye out to make sure you match the right parts with the right gun. I'm thinking of the front fighting compartment and gun mantlet pieces here specifically. So that's the plastic. How will Hornice go on the table? The Hornice Tank Hunter Platoon is a tank unit with the Stormtrooper special rule. Stormtrooper means the unit can attempt a second, different movement order on its turn if it passes the skill test for the first one. Motivation is a fearless 3+. Plus. Hornice crews are combat veterans fighting on their own soil. They're highly motivated. Expect them to stick around when the going gets tough. They also have a veteran skill rating of 3+. Plus. They know what they're doing. However, as an open-topped anti-tank gun, they aren't meant to be used in close assaults, so their assault rating is 5+. Plus. Understandable enough. If your long-range anti-tank gun is in close combat, something has gone wrong with your battle strategy. They are careful, hit on a 4+. Plus. Front armour is 2, side and rear is 1, and top is 0. Some protection against small arms, but not much else. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres and crosses a 3 plus. Even at dash or road speeds, Hornice isn't going to be burning up the table. But it shouldn't need to. The 8.8 centimetre Pack 43 gun has a 48 inch or 120 centimetre range. Careful sighting of these guns with good lanes of fire should minimise how much moving they should need to do. Rate of fire is 2 halted and 1 on the move. Anti-tank is 17, enough to punch nice holes in just about anything. Firepower is 3+. plus. The only special rule is forward firing. Because the gun is mounted in a limited traverse mount on the hull, it is limited to firing at targets fully in front of its hull. Hornice also has a machine gun for self-defence. Again, if you're relying on this, you're doing Hornice wrong. Now we know what it can do, how can we take it? What formations is Hornice in? You can take Hornice in place of a compulsory Jagdpanther platoon in the Jagdpanther Tank Hunter Company. It has a lot of punch, and at 8 points each, it is a cheaper option for the AT-17 Pack 43 gun. But it is a glass cannon, with the big gun but almost no armour. You also have the option to take Stugs at 5.5 points each. Panzer 470s are another option here with a lower anti-tank of 14, but much better armour than Hornice. Possibly a more versatile option if you don't just plan to sit back and shoot at long range. Otherwise, Hornice is available as a support option for bulge German lists. Again, they clock in at the 8-point mark. Hummel is also available as a German heavy artillery support option for all bulge German lists. So that's Battlefront's Hornice and Hummel kit. Mine was a bit battered, but still ended up looking okay after repairs. I guess that shows the kit can take a beating. Watch for gaps at the front edge of the casemate, and have fun getting the gun into place. But this is a nice kit. A worthy replacement for the resin and metal version. Thanks to the Restless Kaiser and Johnny B over at Modelling for Advantage for sending me this sprue to review. Their generous support means I can bring you a wider range of kit reviews than I could just on my own pocket. Don't forget to check out their channel, where I'm assured by Johnny B that there are shenanigans waiting. Thanks for watching. See you next time.